Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 2 of this playlist that I'm calling Matrix Algebra. And so let's forward to where we are today. And we're looking at positive definite matrices. Now, a positive definite matrix is a symmetric matrix that in this product is always greater than 0. And this is for any y not equal to 0. So what is happening here? A is a fixed matrix, and then you can put any values you want for Y. Remember, Y is a vector, so, so it has lots of entries in it. And no matter what values you put in, this matrix product is always greater than zero, then A is positive definite. Now, similarly, if A is positive semi-definite, semi-definite, if you allow it, it could be zero. So... And again, for any y, not equal to 0. Here's a quick example. a prime, a, y. Where a is 2, minus 1, minus 1, 3. Notice it's symmetric. But, you know, that it's if you were to fold it on itself, the numbers would match up. And here we're going to let the vector y be any, you know, numbers, y1 and y2. And when you do this multiplication, you get this. And then it can be simplified to this. You can... Right, you can combine them. Then notice that no matter what values of y1 and y2 we put in, it's always going to be strictly greater than zero. Now remember, you can't. This doesn't include the the zero vector. If you put zero in here, of course it's zero because you multiply anything times zero, you get zero. But that's it. So a is positive definite. Now here's an example where. The matrix A, look at it, it's symmetric. When you do this multiplication, it boils down to this number here. But if Y2 is equal to 2 times Y1, this could be 0. But otherwise, you know, when you square something, it's non-negative. So this is always greater than or equal to 0. So this matrix is positive semi-definite. Now, one way to obtain a positive definite matrix is to create a matrix B that is full column rank, right? It's N by P, but it's full column rank. That tells us that N is greater than or equal to P, right? Because to be full column rank, then uh, there's P independent vectors, which has to be less than the number of rows. Um, and then just multiply P, B transpose B to create a matrix A, and then we know it's it's uh, positive definite. And it's analogous to, you know, taking a number, any number, squaring it, and then that's our new number. That new number is always not, you know, always positive. And so that's what we're doing here. Now, if we know that A is positive definite, we know it's non-singular, what does that mean? Non-singular means it's full column rank. Non-singular means it has a non-zero uh, determinant. We know that the A inverse is positive definite, and we can decompose that matrix into the product of two matrices. Similar to this, that we, we took a matrix that's full column rank, multiplied them together like this, and we got a number. But this is the opposite. If we know we're starting with a positive definite matrix, we can decompose it, into to the product of two matrices and t in this method here in the and it's called uh Chilecki's decomposition and there's actually several ways to do this but it's the way to take a positive definite matrix create an upper triangular matrix and then this product is the original to me that it's like whew, that's so cool how that works so to do this in r is this. So we take a matrix A and CHOL, CHOL, Cholesky's decomp is the function to do that. So if we take Cholesky's decomp of A, store it to T, notice it's an upper triangular matrix, right? Even though this entry is zero, it's still upper triangular because the below the diagonal is all zeros. Now you might think this doesn't look like this matrix. But I'm going to show you that these square root values are 
exactly what's in this matrix below. Right? If we take the square root of 3, that's this. That's that entry. The square root of 6 is this entry. The square root of 1.5 is this entry. So they are the, exactly the same. So if we take T transpose T, we get our original matrix back. And if we take A, yeah, and, and to do this with the all equal function, so we, it does A equal transpose, you know, T transpose times T, and the answer is yes. Now, the determinant of a matrix, so we have uh, a matrix, it's a scalar, and actually A has to be a square matrix, and it's denoted by one of these two. Now, um, probably see this one more, it looks kind of like the absolute value, but it's the, since A is a matrix, we know it's a determinant. <clears throat> and there's specific values or ways to calculate the determinant, and I'm going to skip that. But here for, for 2 and 3, you know, for 2 it's this, pretty easy. It's the product of this minus the product of that. And for 3 it gets more complicated. 4 it's way more complicated. And we'll just use a computer to do it. But the key is to understand what a determinant is. And there's a great video on, on 3 blue, run, 1 brown on determinants that, oh, so describes this. Now, if you have a coordinate system and you transform it some way. So things either get stretched out or they sh get shrunk. And how much they get stretched out or how much they shrink is the determinant, right? So the, these columns of your matrix, the determinant of that tells us how much that transformation would shrink or expand. And I'm gonna let you watch that video on that. It's such a great video. He's an amazing uh, person or, you know, does a great job in explaining things. Very, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> now, if A is a diagonal matrix, then the determinant of A is just a product of the diagonals. Now, A if, if A is singular, what does singular mean? It means that the columns are not, the columns are dependent, meaning one of the columns can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors, and the determinant is zero. And I actually have a, Nice video on that in my one of my playlists. I forget the name of it though. So, um, a is non-singular. What is non-singular means all the columns are independent, and then the determinant is non-zero. If A is positive definite, then we know that the determinant of A is greater than zero. Um, here's some additional properties. We have two matrices. The determinant of the transpose is the same as the determinant of, of the original matrix. The A inverse, the inverse can be brought outside. Now remember that the determinant of A is a number. So a number raised to the minus one is like taking it below, you know, into the denominator. So those two are equal. Um, the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. And then this is sort of a consequence of this. Um, the determinant of A, B is equal to B times A. And how would we take the determinant in R? So we have a matrix A, and we just, the DET function is the determinant of A, that's 27. Now notice that the determinant of A, is that equal to the determinant of the tra A transpose? And it's yes. Now, determinant of A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant. That's true. Now, this is example is determinant of 2 times a is that equal to 2 to the third times the determinant of a and the answer is yes but r brings back false and so this is an example of the dangers of using equal equal as a way to check if two things are equal right this all equal function is a much better way to check so we just bring the same values down and and all equal, of course, shows they're equal, and they should be. Now, is the determinant of A transpose A the same as the determinant of A squared? And the answer is yes. Now, one more quick concept in the trace. Now, to me, the trace is sort of fascinating. It's such an easy concept. It's actually the sum of the diagonal elements of a square matrix, right? So if we have a matrix, M by M matrix, and we add the diagonals, 
that's the trace. And then mathematically, that's what this says. It says add up the 1, 1 element to the 2, 2 element all the way to the n, n element. Now, certain properties, if we have two matrices, they have to be the same size for this property because we're adding or subtracting two matrices. So the trace of that sum is the sum of the traces. Uh, this, if if it's k if a constant or a scalar times a matrix, you can just bring the scalar out front. We have two matrices that conform, meaning you can take the product. Right, those numbers have to be the same for this product, and these outer numbers have to be the same for this product. You can move matrices around, so the trace of a times b is equal to the trace of b times a. And this also works for more matrices in a product and this one becomes so important in the con or the theory of linear models but all these multiplications have to conform so the trace of ABC we can take a and move it to the back assuming the multiplications conform and they're the same and then we can take B and move it to the back and they're the same the trace this one property four is uh, remember these are vectors so uh, Y transpose Y, this is a number, it's a scalar. So it's a one by one matrix. So the trace is actually just that value. So taking the trace of it doesn't change it. But when you take the trace, then you can move multiplication around. And how do we take the trace of a matrix in R? Now there are packages that have the trace built in. And one of the advantages of that is when you take the trace of a matrix, you need it to be a square matrix. So those functions check to make sure it's square. What I'm getting ready to show you doesn't do that. You just have to make sure you, know, you have to know it. So we have two matrices, A and B. And if you take the diag of A, which grabs those diagonal elements and add them, that's the trace. So it's 15. So 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 6 is 15. Boom. Now we can check the properties. So the trace of A plus B is the same is the same as the trace of A plus the trace of B. That's true. Um, the trace of two times A is the same as two times the trace of A. That's true. And the uh, trace of A times B is the same as the trace of B times A. That's true. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.